Thank you all so much for stopping by today. So we are going to start to feed our plants that we have been planting over the end of the summer slash fall season. But I wanna stop for a minute. Is this not a whole fall scene right here? This is like a whole beautiful fall display in the back of me. I just love it and I love those colors. But anyway, let's get to what's back at hand. Um, so if you've been following us, uh, we have been planting different vegetables, different herbs, different flowers, and they have been doing beautiful growing. But now I want to go ahead and start to feed a lot of the vegetables. Now I use a few things and I've shared with y'all before, but I'm going to show you what we're going to be using today. And that way I was trying to see if I could, um, show you all the slow release fertilizer which I'll probably go get I wasn't sure if I had put it up or not but I'll show you that and then I'll show you what liquid fertilizer that we're going to use today so I'm going to show you what I normally use for my planting holes when we first plant and it's a slow release fertilizer it's granules and then I'm going to show you what we feed throughout the growing season especially with a bunch of our leafy greens and I will um go ahead and get that started now due to the fact that um and i did this in our old garden as well but we we have to feed by hand so i don't have any type of system set up through the drip yet that can feed the plants throughout the watering season so i have to put that on a schedule so that i can um just do everything by hand so that's what we're going to do today because it's really a beautiful day so let's go ahead and let's get started slowly but surely we're starting to build the new garden and I still have a whole bunch of plans but I told y'all we're doing it in phases so if you're new to the channel welcome and make sure you hit the subscribe button and tell all your family and your friends about us because we're teaching new beginner gardeners seasoned gardeners how to grow we're going to give you gardening tips um, different things that we use in our garden to help grow but this is such a beautiful community because we always share some of the things that we do in the garden and hope that it will help others and also inspire you to get growing now if you've been hanging out with us for a while thank you all so much for hanging out with me and so like I said today we're going to do some liquid fertilization now I'm gonna link the video y'all because this is amazing uh, I will link that video to where we first planted these two beds and I'm gonna tell you how these two beds came about I had filled my raised beds up they were full and I know that they don't look full but uh, when they reach the maturity the plants reach their maturity they're really going to pretty much fill up everything so for example I know the cabbage looks um, kind of separated but you have to do that when you're planting like although it's small you really want to look at the width that they say to plant it and then that way you'll have enough room for it to grow these are supposed to be some pretty big cabbages here but then i'm also going to walk down here because these are some 45 day cabbages that i've never grown before that i want to um try out as well so we're going to feed those we're going to feed the celery we're pretty much going to feed everything today and we're just going to take it step by step now i'm not going to make this video really long i just really want to show y'all what i'm doing what i use and how i feed but we're going to go ahead get all of these fed and then y'all let me show you we planted uh garlic and we planted onions so this is the garlic right here this is the onions and what i did was i had to use the bulbs this year normally i do like to start my onions from seed because there's so many varieties that you can grow that they just don't sell in the big box stores but my whole thing when i ask people is make sure you know which variety of onions you need to grow so for us here in georgia we have to grow um the short day onions and so make sure you're growing the correct onion so you can get some nice onions. But they're coming up little by little. 
um, and I'm not gonna feed the onions or the garlic today y'all because I recently planted them and I put the slow release fertilizer in there but I am gonna go ahead and get the spinach fed um, and then we have I had a few leafy greens left over that I had started from seed um, and so I'm just gonna give them probably a half a strength because if you can see they're still small so I'm gonna give them like a half strength um, dose of the feed that we're gonna use. And then also, again, we're gonna feed um, this spinach. So um, here's, here's the other two beds and we're still gonna do like a garden tour, but I just want you to see what we're feeding today. So let me go ahead. We'll start off first with the slow release fertilizer that I put in the planting holes and then I'll show you the liquid fertilizer that we are using today. So before we go over everything, y'all, I want you to really hear this. I really want, I always tell people to focus on building good soil. And it's gonna take time to build good soil. Sometimes you have to add amendments. Um, sometimes you have to add things like compost, um, but I really feel like when you build the soil and when you have good soil, then the plants are really going to shine and they're going to take care of everything. Like the plants will be well taken care of. So since we're new to the area, um, it is clay soil. So I'm just slowly trying to build up the soil and slowly trying to build it in the raised beds. But you want to start off with good quality uh, soil. I put garden soil in the uh, in-ground beds. I put uh, a mixture of like a raised bed blend. Um, and this was from one of the local places here that, you know, sells it in bulk. Um, the, the husband and wife team that built the raised beds for us, they sourced it um, from us. And it's also what they use in their garden. So I just wanted to say that. So whenever I make a new bed or whenever I plant something, I always start off with this um the biotone starter plant food um and i use a lot of As Espoma products i might need to reach out to Espoma. i use a lot of their products but i do like it and i like the fact that it's organic now you don't have to buy a big bag like this um we brought this this is something that we brought with us um and i took it throughout the whole time while we were moving because sometimes I have to go to like a specialty garden center um, and get get the biotone products. I do see that they're starting to sell it uh, in the big box stores, but there used to be a time where you just had to go to like a like I said a specialty a specialty garden center and see it. And um, it is a four three three, which means um, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And so this is a slow release fertilizer and it just feeds the soil and the plants over like a growing period. Normally I will, um, when I'm switching out plants, I'll add some more, but not only does it have that, it has a lot of other ingredients, um, including like calcium, magnesium, sulfur. So it has other things too. Um, I think, yeah, I saw uh, feather meal, uh, but it has other ingredients, and I really do like that. I really do like Espoma products. Now, I've been also using this product for a while. Sometimes I'll get just the uh, fish fertilizer by itself, but I was able to find the fish and seaweed fertilizer um, by Neptunes that I like to feed my leafy greens. This is what I really like to feed my leafy greens with um, because... I just feel like um, it show, I can tell the difference in the plant. So that's what we're gonna use today. And they have other liquid fertilizers that you could look up. They have some for like tomatoes. Um, again, I think the yellow label by itself is like the fish fertilizer. Um, I think they have some for like evergreens, but they do have a nice lineup of products and so this is the concentrate you always want to go by the directions right here so we're just using one tablespoon per gallon of water and the this right here y'all it goes a long way it does when you um go by the instructions um now this is and you can do your house plants as well so your 
house plants, your outdoor plants, you can make it as a compost enhancer. Also, um, seed germination, you can help it with that. So this is what I like to use. So let's go ahead. Like I said, I'm not gonna make this video long to where uh, y'all see me like doing the whole bed, but I'm just going to just show you really quick. So normally when I feed, I use some type I forgot y'all my mic wasn't uh it's not working because i had to switch phones and the adapter is different that's why i don't like getting new phones because it's like a whole a whole ordeal but i use some type of watering can we're going to use this today this has kind of like the rain uh attachment on it so we're going to use this today we're going to get our plants fertilized and we are just going to watch it grow over the fall season now if you saw earlier to be honest y'all that lettuce i can really start picking now i can leaf it off from the outer leaves um but i know the kale and the greens they're going to be ready really soon and i am super excited because so i actually put up like a short video of these kale greens right here and one day i was just going in here trying to get uh, just like a few weed uh, plants that were popping up and I made a mistake and broke off one of the leaves. But when I tell y'all this kale is pungent and it's good, it's n the grocery store kale doesn't have anything on the freshness of this. And like I always tell people, you can harvest it. It, has, it packs great nutritional value for the simple fact it doesn't have to go three, 5,000 miles across the country. You're literally going from your garden and taking it inside. So that was, it's amazing. I can't wait. I'm gonna use some for smoothies. I'm also going to use um, some to cook. We cook a lot of kale like collard greens and I probably need to start some more. We have different varieties of kale as well, but it's amazing. And they're gonna be ready to harvest pretty soon. if you saw I started filling up this one and I was like oh that's not the one I'm supposed to use well I was sitting up here like why do you got to buy so many watering cans well I'm glad that I have multiple ones because as I was filling this one up look at this y'all this is leaking out so what I'm going to do it's okay it's totally okay I'm just gonna take this attachment off of here and I think I'm hoping that it's like universal and put it on here <laughs> yeah put it on there and then we just gonna have to get rid of this so let me just find something to water real quick um, that needs watering and then I just have to put this one in the trash <laughs> Okay, so really quickly before we wrap it up, what I want to tell you is that it is not a pleasant smell. It does, um, you know, smells like fish and seaweed. And so that used to be, um, and I'll have to watch it in the new area because that used to sometimes bring animals into um, the yard. But you saw how I watered maybe like a fourth of a section. So whenever you're watering, you want to water deep. You want to water, the, you know, get down to those roots. And so this is going to take me a little while. That's why it's important to carve out some time on your schedule, especially if you're doing it um, by hand like me, so that you can water deep. And so that way you don't have to water as much. And then also the nutrients are getting down to the roots. Okay, so again, I hope that was helpful to you. I'm gonna go ahead, finish up watering 
everything um, that I showed you so that I don't have to do this um, for a while again. Um, and so this will take a little while. And so this is why I always say make a schedule for some of the garden chores that you have to do, especially the ones that may take a little longer, like feeding, like weeding. Carve out some time on your schedule so that you can get it done. So as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure you share this video with your family and your friends. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead, tap the subscribe button. Let me tell y'all something. These... <laughs> These bugs are like out of control. If you saw a few minutes ago, that was a squash bug. I'm really going to have to pay attention to that because I see them a lot and I see them flying a lot. But back to what I saying, what I was saying, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead, tap the subscribe button and make sure you tap the bell so that you can receive notification each and every time we upload a new video. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. And until the next video, bye-bye. Thank you.